I'm not. I'm, I'm just guessing. But, but you've seen shows where people have found these little lion cubs, you know. Oh, aren't they cute? And you bring them in, you pet them, and they're romping around. They're fine. There's only one trouble, Noah. That little lion, you keep them and you feed them, you know, and they get older and you, they turn into a big lion and they will eat you. They will eat you. Don't you know that sometimes people do that with demons? And, and at first they start in on something and it's like, it's okay. And they, it's, it didn't bother me, it didn't bite me, it's okay. But then they keep it around and they kind of feed it and it kind of grows and grows. And next thing you know, the thing eats you. And you wonder what happened. It rem- reminds me of an old story I read and I found it again. And it goes like this, that the weather was getting cold. And a farmer was worried about his sheep up in the high pastures, right? And so he, he, he wrapped his wool coat tightly around him. He braved the wind and he, and he climbed up this steep path. And, and uh, as he started coming back down uh, the path, he was in a hurry to get to his nice warm house. This farmer saw a snake uh, lying across the path. Please help me, said the snake. I'm freezing. Please take me down into the valley where it's warmer. Farmer said, I'm no dummy. I know who you are. You're a rattlesnake. If I pick you up, you're going to bite me and poison me. Oh, no, said the snake. I wouldn't do that. I promise that if you carry me down the mountain, I will not bite you. You and your children will be safe from me and my kind from this day forward. The farmer had compassion on the snake. And he picked up the snake and he put it under his coat. And he carried it down into the valley and he laid it on the ground. And the snake began to get warmer. And he began to slither and move. And then he coiled up and he struck the farmer and bit him on the leg. Ow! You promised me you wouldn't bite me, said the farmer. Ah, said the snake. So I did. But you knew who I was when you picked me up. Now there's a story here about demons, about sin, and about being not necessarily even possessed, but oppressed by demonic activity when we pick it up and we think that somehow it's not going to bite us. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Make no mistake about it. God has given us his word. God has given us a relationship with him through his son. God has given us his Holy Spirit so that we won't be bit, so that we won't be destroyed, so that the lion will not eat us up. How many families have I been to in the last 24 years in full-time ministry and seen families and I've seen the repercussions, I've seen the carnage laying around and wonder about the leader in the home and other people in the home and all that they had done up to that point and say, this is a surprise to you. You knew what it was when you picked it up. Lead your home. Understand the ramifications of the choices that we make. But I like the rest of the verse. Jesus said, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So much of life comes down to making a decision. Do I follow Jesus in his teaching? Do I trust it no matter what? Or do I trust the enemy? Do I trust the enemy? You know that, 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 that demon comes into our lives for two reasons. I've only stated one. One is he's invited in. And how tragic that is. But sometimes he invades. Right? He invades. And do we trust Jesus at that time when an unwanted enemy comes to test us and invade our lives? Demonic Dan entered this assembly in despair. He left changed. And that's the point. We have hope no matter what. We have hope. Christ can free us from what these demons can do or try to do in our lives. People were amazed. They were amazed. And it says that news about him spread quickly. Now, I don't know about you, but I just got parked there and say an old expression that you've heard a million times. The news about him 
spread quickly after this. Do you think? No kidding? No kidding. Of course it's going to spread. When Jesus' teaching is brought into our lives with his authority, and it will make drastic changes in our lives. No matter what kind of junk that, that demons and, and the enemy will bring into our lives, that we can take that and turn it for good. It can bring change to our lives, that we have life and life to the full, no matter what happens. We studied in, in, in our Bible class this morning that, that when the storms of life come, and they do come to everybody, Christian and non-Christian alike, right? When the storm comes, sometimes uh, God calms the storm, and other times he calms the person amidst the storm. That will get attention from people around us. Well, that news will spread quickly. That's the kind of way that we want to market New Song Community Church. We don't want to market them because we've got slick advertising or we've got funky music or that we can dress casual or anything like that. Even though those things may be good and true or whatever. What we want to market, what we want to have as our brand is that Jesus Christ is here with power and authority to change lives that no matter what comes against us, we will stand. And we'll stand victoriously. Right? When that happens in reality, that news will spread. And I tell you, when we embrace Jesus and he's in our midst and he disturbs our lives so that we're different, we're going to make that change. That news will spread and spread quickly. We don't have to spend a penny on advertising. That news spreads quickly. We need to pray that our assembly is not like theirs was. Jesus went fishing and he found a fish there and he cleaned them right there. We need to clean fish here. Before this news is going to spread about Jesus Christ, we got to clean fish here. I don't want someone demon-possessed, demon-oppressed, uh, and pestered in any way by demons here at all. The, the demonic control and it can control you? No way! If you're hearing my voice right now, no way that should be happening. How come we speak in the authority of Jesus Christ be quiet and come out. That's the command he gave. Be quiet and come out. I, I want to do that today. I want to speak to any enemy force that's amongst us to be quiet and come out. Whether it's in your home, in your personal life, at your work, in our neighborhood, in this school. You know, I'm thankful, speaking of the school, that Matt Oren over here, a disciple, a committed disciple of Jesus Christ is running for school board. This has nothing to do with politics. There's nothing political about it. The fact of the matter is we should care about all the students that are in this place and in all the other schools and the teachers and so on. And so there's an election coming up. I hope if you're a part of the school system, you'll vote for Matt or any other disciple of Jesus Christ that would be running for this who cares and loves the children of our community. I hope you do that. Um, and so, I don't know when the election is, May 3rd, so please uh, do that. Uh, but, but I want to do that here today in this building and, and, uh, and, and, and speak with the authority of Jesus Christ today as we kind of close here. And so it's going to be a combination of prayer. So worship team, go ahead and make your way up. I want everybody to stand because this is, this is going to be kind of a prayer time. I want to confront and speak authority over demons right here, right now. Because Jesus delegated this authority to us to speak to demons, to be quiet and come out. Be quiet and come out. 